Hey guys, Steve here from Nostalgia. Today I'm going to be showing off a really cool Raspberry Pi case that I found called the Mini PS1 case, and it's made by Megabitness.com. I'll make sure to leave a link to uh, their uh, webpage in the description below, so feel free to check it out whenever you guys want. It's essentially a shrunken down version of the original PlayStation shell. It's even a little bit smaller than the PlayStation Classic shell. Priced in around $40 US, it makes it a little bit more expensive than the likes of the Super Pi case or the Nest Pi case by retro flag this case isn't mold injected either it is a 3d printed shell and it's got some really cool finishing touches so some of the cool features included would be full color sony and playstation labels located right on the top of the case it's got an led power indicator light it's got two usb ports at the front of the case so you can plug two different controllers in and it also has functional power and reset buttons. Now keep in mind, you are going to need to install a script for them, but they do work really well. And it's even outfitted with mounting holes and a power socket for the internal fan to keep your Raspberry Pi running nice and cool. Some of you may have seen a video I put out a little while ago showing off a Pi Station case I personally had 3D printed and I had to modify for my Raspberry Pi. This case is without a doubt a much better case. So in this case, assembly was quite easy. The entire unit came with six screws, four short, two long. The short ones were used to mount your Raspberry Pi and your two long ones were used to assemble the case itself. The USB extender is a key feature. Because of the design, each USB port is connected to its own USB connector on the Raspberry Pi. The reason this is important is because on retro flag cases, the USB ports are all connected to a single USB port, acting almost like a USB hub of sorts. This is fine for most applications, but I find that connecting two of the exact same types of controllers into the RetroFlag case can sometimes cause issues with the controller input and it doesn't always work the way that you want it to. This is not the case with the Mini PS1 case. So some of you guys may have noticed that there is no ethernet or network port on this case. And to me, that's a major downside. You can of course request that they cut in or they can print it with a little hole for your ethernet cable. But if you don't specifically request it, you're not gonna get one. Since the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and 3B have Wi-Fi, it's not that terrible. It definitely would have been nice if there was a pre-cut hole for it already. Aside from connecting the USB extension, there are four GPIO pins that you need to connect. Um, this isn't difficult and they provide instructions on the shipping box. Um, the pins will control your LEDs, your power, and your reset button.
To get the shutdown and reset button scripts working, you need to follow some instructions on their website. It's a little bit more complicated than the retro flag cases and requires a basic understanding of SSH. So if you don't know SSH, it's something you're gonna have to learn or this may not be the case for you. So what we're going to do is essentially download the scripts off their website and unzip them. Make sure that your Raspberry Pi is on and connected to your network. We're also going to need to download a software called WinSCP. This software will help you transfer the files from your computer onto your Raspberry Pi right through your network. So now we need to open up the WinSCP software, log in with the credentials that they provide to you right on their website, and then navigate to the home folder, then the Pi folder, and then within that Pi folder we need to create a new folder called ps one Pi. Then what we need to do is locate the files that we just downloaded uh, from our zip, and we need to click and drag them over to the folder that we just created. Once the transfer is complete, we no longer need the software and we can actually close it. Then what we want to do is we want to open up our PuTTY software. Again, we need to find our Raspberry Pi using the RetroPie hostname, and then log in to our Raspberry Pi through SSH. Next, what we're gonna need to do is locate our rc.local file. And once we get into there, we need to enter two additional lines of code towards the bottom. Again, all the coding and all the information will be right on their website. And I'll leave that uh, link in the description below. So now we just need to save the file and we are actually done with the power and the reset button scripts. The next thing that we need to do is configure the LED light. So still within PuTTY, we want to access our Raspi config. And from this menu, we want to select our interfacing options, then serial, then yes, and then finally, okay. Next, I select finish and it exits and takes me right on back to our terminal. Now we need to update our retroarc.config file. So we have to sudo nano into the config file and look for a few different things in there that we have to change. So we have to change our config underscore save underscore exit option and make sure that it's got a true value. Then we need to scroll down and look for a line that reads network underscore cmd underscore port equals 55355. And we need to change the line above it to say true. Now we save and exit. The next thing that we can do now is we can reboot our system just by typing in sudo reboot. So that's all that we had to do and now we are finally finished configuring it. Now although the software side of things was a bit more tedious than I would like and I wouldn't recommend this case to beginners who have never done any work in the back end of their pies, the company did a fairly good job on explaining how you're supposed to do things step by step. So even if you are a beginner and you think you can possibly handle what's going on, they do have very detailed instructions right on their site. I would say though that this is a really cool case and it's really your best option for anybody who's looking for a PlayStation style case for the Raspberry Pi. And until Retroflag comes out with something, this is going to be your best option. Now as I mentioned earlier, it's a $40 case and the price is a little bit high but you have to keep in mind it is a 3D printed case and it likely needs 13 to 15 hours of print time alone. And then they've got to spend some time putting in the wiring and the assembly. And I don't really think that that price point is unreasonable for what you're getting. Keep in mind that these are not mass produced items and they do take a lot more care than something that you would be getting from Retroflag, which is just going to be pumping things out. If you guys are interested in this case, make sure you click on the link to Megabitness's website in the description below. I want you to keep in mind that I don't have any affiliate links with them. I'm not making any money if you guys purchase from them. I simply saw the case. I thought it was cool. I personally ordered it and uh, I thought it was a pretty neat case in comparison to what I've previously seen from 3D printed cases. They also do have some other pretty cool cases too. Uh, I saw that they have a pretty neat N64 style case and a few other things too. So make sure if you guys are interested in that you check them out but that's all i've got for you guys for this video thank you so much for watching make sure that you give the video a thumbs up comment below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already but other than that guys i'll talk to you guys again real soon